Hello and welcome to My Dietitian Journey. I'm Felicia, owner and registered dietitian at Peraz Nutrition and My Dietitian Journey. Today I want to talk about how I typically structure an initial session with a case study example. I hope this will give you some ideas for working with your patients. So before I get into the case study, I want to mention for my initial sessions that I usually block off an hour of time for my patients and most of them end up using that full period. Also, before any initial sessions, I do have patients fill out paperwork in their portal and also sign off on some consent documents. One of the patient forms that I use is a new patient form where I collect information about their medical history, their medications, their goals, and more. And this really gives me an idea of what direction the session might take and also if I need to have any other resources available. So the patient case study I'm going to use today is a 50-year-old male who is working from home full-time. They are married with no children. Their past medical history indicated on their paperwork includes diabetes, hypertension, irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS. They also indicated a psychiatric history of anxiety and depression. They report no allergies, but do have an intolerance to lactose. The patient is taking multiple medications for blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, cholesterol, and also mental health. They are a non-smoker and consume alcohol infrequently, and they're not currently physically active, and they've never worked with a registered dietitian before, but they do indicate on their paperwork that they wanted to develop healthier eating habits. The first thing I start off with, with any patient, is an introduction and a summary for the session. If I haven't talked to the patient when scheduling, I usually say something like, hi, whatever the patient's name is, I'm Felicia, the dietitian. Just to give you an overview of what we will talk about today, I'm going to go through your paperwork to get some clarifications and hear from you as to what you're hoping to get from our session. If there's any education that might be helpful, we can go over that during our session. I can also send resources after the appointment if needed. And we have about one hour for our time together. Depending on if insurance coverage was already discussed with the patient, I do usually cover this at the top of the session. I let the patient know how many visits are covered per year. If there's a copay or coinsurance, the patient would have already been informed of that prior to the session with an estimated cost of coverage that I send through Simple Practice, which is the EMR I use. I do also review with the insurance coverage if the patient has any questions before we move on in the session. So for example, I might say, based on your insurance, you have unlimited visits based on medical necessity at no cost to you. Were there any questions that you had about your insurance coverage? I usually try in the beginning of the session to really, again, go over what information might be useful for them. And I also try to highlight that my approach is collaborative because most people end up asking me if I'm going to just tell them what to do. And many of you probably already know that this is not a useful strategy to just tell someone what to do in terms of like the long-term success. So before I get into asking more questions, I usually check in with the patient and say something like, before we move into anything else, were there any initial questions that you had or areas that you want to make sure that we focus in on for today? Usually this question prompts the patient to talk about what brought them in. If it doesn't, I usually ask for them to share what they're hoping to get from our time together today. From this particular patient case study, they had mentioned wanting to develop healthier eating habits. So I've also used what they indicate on their intake form to ask a more specific question. So I might say, you mentioned on your paperwork that you wanted to develop healthier eating habits. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? For this patient, they shared that they wanted to know more about what to do, and they often know what to do themselves, but they're having a really hard time implementing it and following through with the goals that they set for themselves, which is pretty much like 95% of the patients that I work with that they know what to do, but they're just not doing it. So my response to this is usually something like a reflection on what they might have shared, but then offering insight as to other patients that I've worked with. So I might say 95% of the patients that I work with know what to do, but they're having a hard time doing it. And a lot of the time that I spend with my patients is really understanding what's getting in the way. Maybe it's motivation, maybe it's a goal adjustment, maybe it's just learning something new or different information that might be more effective. In this initial portion of the session, the patient might share about their mental health diagnoses as well. Sometimes I find that that comes up initially. Um, But if not, 
I usually do want to check in with the patient to see if they're working with a therapist. So for example, I might say, you mentioned anxiety and depression in your paperwork and that being something that you manage and also take medications for. I am wondering if you're working with a therapist or if you had worked with one in the past. So the next step in the conversation after I've kind of heard out the initial concerns from the patient is to really get a detailed food history and food recall. I usually start this part of the conversation by saying, you know, it's helpful for me to get an understanding of your current intake pattern so we can see what's working well and what are areas that you feel like you wanna work on. What does your morning routine look like with your food and beverage intake? I also always clarify when I'm following up on what they've shared um, to identify if there's any things like cream or sugar or condiments um, for their breakfast. I'll usually ask follow-up questions to identify what the portion sizes are like, you know, identify if they're having like whole wheat kinds of products or things like that. If someone says they skip breakfast, I usually find out if this is a new pattern or something that they've always done. I then move into lunch, dinner, and then snacks. I will say for some patients, they just rattle off their entire day. And then usually I just listen first and then I'll go back and ask some clarifying questions. If someone just lists one meal at a time, then I might prompt them for the next meal per period or for the snack. So if not already shared, I do check in about beverages and ask questions like, what do you normally drink in the morning? Or what do you normally drink throughout the day? I also check in about their eating out and their weekend pattern because a lot of times this can be you know, something that varies with what they eat on the, during the weekday and then what they might have on the weekends. So I might say, are you typically someone who cooks at home or do you find yourself ordering in or dining out? Uh, what does your food intake look like on the weekends? Would you say it's the same or different than your usual pattern during the week? If the patient mentions a significant other or if it's in their paperwork, I do usually check in to see who is doing the food shopping and also the cooking in the household. At some point during the recall, a patient usually shares if they've been on a diet in the past. If not, I do ask if they've been on any past diets. I'd like to get an idea of what has worked or maybe hasn't worked in the past for them. So for this particular patient, they had been on a plant-based diet, they tried Weight Watchers, both the old version and the new version, um, and they also were involved in a weight loss competition at a past job. So in this conversation, I asked what they liked and what they didn't like about the past diets, um, and also what was something that maybe stuck with them from the diets that they've tried in the past. And this really gives me a lot of good information about maybe how we might approach different goals in our session. If the patient mentions, you know, what they really didn't like in terms of a strategy, I might ask some follow-up questions. Like, for example, this patient mentioned that they didn't love the whole idea of tracking. And for me, I know that working with patients, it can be really helpful to have them track their intake for a lot of reasons. There's also some instances where tracking is not useful, but this patient in particular, they did not like tracking their calories and their macros by hand. Um, and they just found that this was very time consuming, which is very understandable. So I explored with them a little bit about their tracking, why they felt like it was time consuming, and again, found that they were tracking literally every single calorie and having to search macronutrients and micronutrients. Um, so finding all that nutrition information is definitely time consuming. So we kind of talked about later in the session some ideas for ways to kind of make tracking less time consuming and also more efficient. After getting an idea of somebody's food intake pattern for the day, I usually ask what stands out to them about their intake or what areas they'd like to improve upon. Some people already highlight this when I'm collecting their food recall information. They might say something like, oh, dinner is my worst time or after dinner is my worst time because I tend to really just overdo the snacks. I've also had patients who voice concerns or questions during the food recall. So they might say, I've been avoiding lactose because I end up with diarrhea or bloating, so I use lactose-free milk. They might also say something like, I don't know if I should be eating potatoes at dinner because of my diabetes. I try to take note of any of these comments during the session so we can kind of circle back to those for maybe some potential education during this session or the next one. Depending on how it's brought up, I might also just note it down the chart. For example, with the potatoes comment, I might say, you know, with diabetes management, you could still incorporate starchy vegetables like potatoes. However, one factor is building a plate that's also gonna be balanced with, you know, lean protein and non-starchy vegetables. 
from what you described, you typically have lean protein in your dinner. We could talk about non-starchy vegetables and building a healthy plate if that might be helpful to you. Usually the patient is gonna say yes, and I will either provide some education right then or continue with the recall, and then we kind of circle back to that topic. Either before the intake pattern or after, kind of depending on the conversation flow from that first session, when I first get to know the patient, usually I'm gonna check in on long-term goals and then also areas of improvement. Again, if I did the recall first, sometimes this actually comes up in the conversation. If not, I try to get a gauge on this in the beginning of the session. What I'm really trying to do is identify where the patient is now with their health and wellness and then where they'd like to be. Then I'm gonna explore the gap between those two areas and identify what might be needed in terms of an intervention. Maybe it's gonna be education, motivational interviewing, or something else. So how I might introduce this is by saying, usually in the first appointment, I like to get an idea of the areas you would like to make some improvements on. This isn't to put any pressure on starting anything in particular, but just so we can kind of see what those long-term goals are, and then we can move into identifying the steps to take. So if you can envision your ideal food intake pattern, what would that look like? I use the same type of question when I'm covering exercise and other kinds of behaviors too. I always provide a reflection or some kind of summary to make sure that I catch everything the patient says before moving on. Sometimes I might have a prompt like, you mentioned night snacking was an area that you're struggling with. Are there any adjustments that you'd like to see with snacks? So with this patient in particular, they were hoping to get to a point where food was fueling them and not contributing to an increase in IBS symptoms. They also wanted to reduce refined snacks like chips and candy and sugary beverages. So whenever I review any goals or visions, this is usually a good point to also explore motivators or barriers. I might ask something like, what would you say is your primary motivation for making these changes? Sometimes I do address barriers at this point, but sometimes it's not until we get to the goal setting piece depends on how it's appropriate in the session. And other times the patient actually brings up the barriers as they're talking. So for example, with this patient, they mentioned that work was a stressor that led to overeating, especially with the unhealthy snacks. And then they also highlighted a barrier for cooking um, and the time being an issue and that also influencing physical activity as well. Now, depending on the conversation, I might move into exploring past education and then providing education um, or exploring medical care. So this is very much gonna depend on what the patient is sharing and whether or not I need to check in on medical appointments or labs, future appointments first, or if the education might be more appropriate now. So if I'm moving into education, like I actually did with this patient, I'm gonna first elicit from them whether they had any information about a particular condition. So for example, you mentioned IBS, and I know you've not worked with a dietitian prior, but have you had any information from your doctor or any research that you've done on IBS? If the patient had education, I ask if it would be helpful if we've reviewed anything in the appointment. If they haven't had any education, again, I pose that same question, would it be helpful for us to review anything during today's session? or if they would prefer me to send them over some resources that they can review first, and then we talk about it in the next appointment. Usually at this point in the session, doctors have already been mentioned at some point by the patient, even if it's just a response to something else. But if not, I do try to bring it up at this point in the session. So I might say something like, with IBS, are you working with a gastroenterologist or just your primary care doctor? I then check in on any recent appointments, any upcoming appointments, any testing that they might have had done. The same with diabetes, because this was also noted on this patient's paperwork. So I'll ask them if they're working with an endocrinologist, they had any recent labs, uh, what those labs were, if they have a copy. If not, I get a copy between the appointments. If the patient had lab work done, I do check in with them to see if they had any questions about the readings or what things meant. Often I find that patients don't get education from a healthcare provider on any of their labs, besides maybe like watch your sugars or your A1C is a little elevated, but they don't really even know what an A1C number is. So sometimes I'll go over that in an appointment with a patient 
identify what they don't know about their lab work, and then provide some education around that. Another area I wanna get more information on from a patient is exercise. So even if a patient mentions that they don't exercise in their paperwork, I still wanna know what their day-to-day -day looks like. So are they someone that's on their feet all day long, or are they gonna be someone who's more sedentary? So I usually start this conversation with, in your paperwork, you mentioned that you're not currently active. And then also in today's session, you mentioned working from home. Can you just tell me a little bit more about your day-to-day -day life? Are you finding you're on your feet or more sedentary throughout the day? A lot of times when we get to this part of the conversation and we explore what they've done previously with activity, um, they might also bring up when they had a consistent routine, what they were doing. They might also share about exercises that they really find enjoyable or things that they don't really find enjoyable. I also really try to explore you know, with exercise, if they had a previous routine, what made them stop that routine? Was it motivation? Was it pain or something else that came up? Um, I also like to know what they are looking to do in the future. For some people, they don't really wanna focus on exercise just yet, but they wanna focus on their, their food habits, which is completely fine. A very common thing that I hear from patients when I'm talking about their current or past exercise routine, especially this patient in particular, was that they have this home equipment that they have used in the past or maybe never used at all. And now the treadmill has become a coat hanger, the dumbbells are sitting in the closet collecting dust, whatever it might be. A lot of people jump into buying exercise equipment in the hopes that it's gonna motivate them, but they haven't really figured out how to build it into their routine. So it just becomes one more thing that they're not doing and something that they've really failed at, or at least that's the way that they see it. So if this does come up, I really try to normalize it and then also address the guilt as well. Depending on the patient and if this is the first appointment and depending on where we are in the appointment, we may not have any kind of formal goal set just yet. Some patients do bring up areas that they wanna work on in the session, but starting with them may not be feasible just yet. So I might say something at this point in the session like, at this point, I wanna make sure that we have a plan of what happens between our sessions. So far, we've talked about, and then I provide a brief summary of the session so far. I then ask if they are open to doing maybe some tracking between the appointments, but this very much is gonna depend on the patient because tracking can look very different, and for some, it, it might not be appropriate at this stage. For this patient, they had already shared that they had some issues with tracking in the past. So we address specifically what they would track, how that data is gonna be useful for us in the session, and really what that's gonna look like for them on the day-to-day -day basis. I also am gonna explore with the patient the method of tracking. So is it gonna be pen and paper, using a phone application? And I really just make sure that we're both on the same page about the specifics of tracking also, if it's gonna be more than just food, like are they tracking symptoms that they're having GI-wise? Are they tracking their energy levels, their mood, their beverage intake, their exercise? The key is really to make sure that tracking is appropriate and also feasible for the patient for where they are right now. I usually do try to get a week for data. Then at the next session, we're gonna determine if continuing a track is actually useful or if we wanna discontinue it. If somebody's specific goals were brought up during the session, I usually do try to highlight them at the stage and then also identify priority goals so we know what best to address first. With any goals, I always explore barriers so we can increase the likelihood that they're gonna follow through with success. At this point in the session, usually we're getting close to time. So I might say something like, we are just at about our time for today, but I wanna check in if there were any additional questions or concerns that you had that we haven't gotten to for today. If the patient has a lot of questions or concerns, I usually summarize those or reflect them, and they then say something like, I'm gonna write these down so we can address those at the start of our next session. If this isn't something that we have enough time for in the appointment, because again, I wanna make sure that I'm checking in with them throughout the session on any questions they have, but sometimes it's not until the end of the appointment where someone comes up with these different questions or these concerns based on the conversation that we had. If there's no concerns, no questions, then I move into scheduling at this point. When I talk about scheduling, I do usually frame it in a particular way. So I usually say, did you wanna schedule a follow-up now or did you wanna reach out to me? Some people wait to schedule because they need to check their calendar. I also wanna give people kind of an out 
if they're not feeling comfortable saying that they don't want to you know, schedule another session with me. So this kind of helps to reduce just that awkwardness, but also helps to reduce the likelihood that a patient's going to cancel last minute or no show. Most people, when I ask you know, about when we're going to meet for our next appointment, um, they usually ask me, you know, what's the best time frame? What do you normally suggest? My response is always, you know, between the first and the second appointment or those first couple of appointments, I try to keep them a little closer together, usually between one and four weeks. This really helps us to keep the momentum going, also allow time for any tracking, but also not so much time that if they have major issues, major concerns, that we can't address those right away. At the very end of the session, I confirm the appointment date, the time for the follow-up, and then also send the appointment notice right during the session so I can make sure that it's confirmed with the patient. I also reconfirm any goals or next steps before we close out for the session for that day. So I hope that this was helpful in giving you a little bit of an idea of what my approach is for the initial session with a patient. Thanks so much for listening and be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions and subscribe for more videos.